program is brought to you by ExtraTech, a leading professional IT training institute. And 3Beads Education and Visa Services, a leading Australian education consultancy. Namaste. Welcome to another special non-resident Nepalese Association and RNA election episode of the Influence Academy uh, with Anusha. <clears throat> According to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, in 2020, there were 6,060 Nepalese um, in age group 15 to 19. Those populations were born in Nepal, but they migrated to Australia. We can predict that there are over 10,000 second generation Nepalese currently residing in Australia. And Australia aims to keep the Nepalese language, culture, and food alive in second generation people of Nepali origin and beyond. I am accompanied by Mr. Dikchant Tungel, who represents second generation Nepalese, who was just nine years of age when he arrived in Australia. He is 22 years old now. Dikchant is an aspiring national youth member candidate for NRN Australia. He is based in and has registered his candidacy from Canberra. In this episode, we will be discussing his reason for choosing to file his candidacy for election, his agendas, and how he will contribute to the initiatives of NRN Australia in his two-year term. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Dikchant. How are you this morning? Good. Thank you, Anissa, for having me. It's a great pleasure to be on here on Everest TV. Pleasure is all ours. It is terrific to have a you know conversation with such a young, aspiring candidate like yourself. You are setting an example for all second generation please here in Australia. In 2005, NRNA was established. Now we are in 2021. So it's been almost 16 years as uh, since establishment. And you are here in Australia for about almost 14 years. Could you yeah. highlight some of your work where our audience can know you better? So, um, so I've been involved with NRNA ever since I came to Australia in 2007 with my mom and dad, Rajan Dungel and Mira Dimosina Dungel. They are the ones that showed me the ropes, taught me about NRNA, got me involved in the activities such as sporting events, fundraisers, music events, festivals. I was only nine when I came to Australia. Now I'm 22, right? I just finished my year two, going on to year three in Canberra at a primary school. Little, no, little knowledge for English is very difficult, but you know we still strive through it. And with the help of the community, we started a football team here in Canberra, one of the biggest Nepalese football clubs in Canberra right now, known as a CNFC. Right. It all started in the suburbs of Downer and Lynham, suburbs in Canberra, with just a couple of lads having fun. Right. Now it's one of the biggest football teams here, Nepalese football teams here in Canberra right now. Wow. I was very little. Right. I couldn't contribute too much to society because I'm very little. I'm 9, 10, 11 years old. But what I could do, I did. Right. Help put, pack up chairs, tables, just the small things that really mattered. I did. Okay. That's amazing. And is it the first time you're standing as a candidate for the NRNA election? This is the first time I'm standing up for candidate, candidacy. Mm -hmm. um, just here to see, and I want to get involved with our community mm -hmm. and see what happens on the inside that the members don't get to see. Mm -hmm. So when did you realize that you needed to get involved in the in this NRNA initiative? Oh, as I said before, I've always been involved in NRNA. With, mm -hmm. you know, with my parents being such big social workers and being such a big part of the community, they've just influenced me to come and do what's right for all of us here, you know, help by helping bring my ideas forward, you know, mm -hmm. how we can help to use. Mm -hmm. so it is impressive that you were aware and you are aware of your you know, purpose and the importance of the contribution from such a young age. And young people constitute clear assets to development uh, when they are positively empowered 
to be active members, right? And supporting, supporting and including young people in development processes is critical as youth have, you know, experience, knowledge and ideas that are unique uh, to the situation, enabling them to offer key insights and perspectives on development that adults cannot. And young people are the future custodians of their environments and leaders of their peers. So how do you think that NRNA should, NRN Australia should portray itself to get the young age like yourself interested? I believe the NRNA should portray itself as more of a regional organization, right? Not such a politically influenced club, right? Mm -hmm. That's how the young people see NRNA mm -hmm. as a politically influenced or as a business club, right? Mm -hmm. NRNA should have non-residents Nepalese back, right? If anyone is in trouble in Australia, they should be able to call NRNA, call the NRNA helpline and someone should provide them with help, right? This could be with any type of help. This could be assault cases, just work rights, right? Because so many young people in Australia get mistreated at work. Mm -hmm. right they they say their workplace will be like hey I'll, i'm going to cancel your visa the workplace has no right to do that mm -hmm. so the nepalese community and the youth are scared they not scared but they're vulnerable to this you know big organizations in australia taking advantage of them so they should have someone they can call and be like hey guys like this is happening what what are my rights mm -hmm. you know they don't want to call fair works right they should have someone in our nepalese community in nrna being hey so right it's just the garden party era Hamro laws and regulations are this, right? This is who you should contact, and mm. this is how we can help you, right? Mm. We should have such a good helpline here for all our youth, right? They, someone just to talk to even during our dark times, right? Mm. We, everyone goes through dark times, and if we have no one to talk to, we should have a helpline, right? Just so we can have someone to talk to and chat with, mm -hmm. right? We have so many experienced people in NRNA, right? This should be done. Mm -hmm. A helpline should be more reasonable. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. will get more youth involved. They will think they will they will know that we are here to help them. So overall, youth empowerment is an effort towards making a course for you to sustain and adopt as per the situation. And and our Australia, like you mentioned, could offer those programs you know, for not only for young people, but for, for all people so yes. that, you know, we could, we could get, we could be aware of those, uh, you know, activities, all people could be aware of those activities. So, you, okay, that's a good point. So uh, moving on, if you are aware of the objectives of the NRNA, one main objective is the continuation of, you know, Nepali citizenship. There have been various initiatives for the dual citizenship. Like, for example, you're born in Nepal and you know, migrated, and you migrated to Australia, you have Australian citizenship, but Nepal is a single citizenship country. So do yes. you think the continuation of, uh, you know, Nepali citizenship uh, in the first and the second generation, um, you know, are essential? And how does it connect us back home? Look, when you have an Australian passport, carrying a visitor visa to visit your own country, that hurts, right? Mm -hmm. How do you feel when you don't have the rights to enter your own home, mm -hmm. right? Going home to Nepal never feels like going to America, Qatar, or Singapore, mm -hmm. right? But you're treated the same way as a foreigner. You look at our status, would be the same as an American visiting Nepal as a non-resident, right? Nepalese visiting our homeland, mm -hmm. right? Why is Nepal so reluctant on giving Nepalese citizenship? Nepal is between two of the biggest nations in the world right now, China mm -hmm. and India. And the matter of existence is of matter of existence is dual citizenship, mm -hmm. right? It is very serious and sensitive matter. That is a reason why Nepalese government is being so reluctant on giving dual citizenships. In your point of view, why do you think Nepal is so reluctant regarding this matter? Nepal is so reluctant on giving dual citizenship because if investment is allowed by nrna freely and equal voting rights is given people who live in nepal the disadvantage the people living on border of poverty will suffer the most mm. right because the biggest chunk of money could get out of the country 
So this is a matter of broad discussion, investigation, and decision should be made considering every aspects of the side effect. Mm. Mm. That is a huge uh, comment, uh, according to your opinion. Uh, moving on, although a key part of youth uh, members' role will involve uh, working face to face with young people, there are also roles that a youth member may be commonly asked to take on. You know, these roles will require a range of skills, knowledge, you know, and confidence. So what is your understanding of the responsibility of national youth member? National youth member is, I, will, I have to support our youth coordinators. That's national youth coordinators, our state youth coordinators to help them, empower them, mm -hmm. give them information and provide information to them about how we can engage more of our youth, right? Because they are the leaders and I'm here to support them. So my ideas will contribute to them and so they can make a better impact in our community. That's, that's well done, that, that's amazing. So moving on, when you were a child, the days uh, seem long and endless, especially during math class. <laughs> but, now, <laughs> but now as someone you know, in their first few years of adulthood, Yes. Everything seems to be moving at a breakneck speed, you know, before you know it, the day is gone and you haven't finished all that you needed to get done. Not only that, like there are loads more that need to be done on the following day, along with the stuff that you didn't accomplish yesterday. So all your work, you know, your work, um, your, your universities, uh, your, your uni and your volunteer work for the community. So how are you going to manage your time? Look, NRNA is a volunteer job, right? So my main goal will still be my career. At the end of the day, I have a stable job. However, I'm young with plenty of energy and I'm willing to give time to the NRNA and our community. That is why I'm here today, right? If I couldn't help the NRNA, if I couldn't give my time and, you know, stand up for change, I would not be here today. I would not be a candidate. I'm only here as a candidate to help our Nepalese community, our youth, our young people in Australia. Look, NRNA is a volunteer job. My main goal will still be my career at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I have a stable job, right? However, I'm young with plenty of energy, mm -hmm. right? And willing to give my time to the NRNA and our community. That is why I'm here. If I didn't have time, if I didn't want to be involved with NRNA, I wouldn't have, you know, placed my candidacy. But you will have work commitments, you will have your uni commitments, and, you know, volunteer work requires dedication and, you know, commitment, a biggest commitment that you can give. And that is the biggest challenge, uh, you know, especially you are, you're trying to, you know, build a career out of your, um, you know, academic uh, achievements, right? So yes. do you think it has a big challenge for you? That's a big challenge, but look, to give time and to be motivated to do something, you have to be willing, right? Mm -hmm. If you're not willing and not giving 100% of your time and energy to something, you mm -hmm. will not be able to do it, right? I believe I have that capability of doing this. That is why I'm here today, right? Because I'm going to give 100% at everything I do. And this will be one of my top priorities. Okay. So NRNA Australia, an RNA institution has established itself as one of the vital stakeholders to be connected, sorry, to be considered in developing Nepal. And you were raised here. How, how, how connected are you with Nepal? I mean, younger people, you even struggle to understand and speak fluently in Nepali language, you know. So how, how do you think you are connected to Nepal? I'm connected to Nepal through heart-to-heart -heart connection, right? My grandma's still there. All my family's still there. Most of my family's still there. I still call them every single day. My friends are still over there, right? You know, we have a Discord. Uh, Discord, Discord is a group, like a program, like Facebook, Instagram. Mm -hmm. And we have over 4.5K members on there. 
right? Mm -hmm. This is around all over Australia, all mm -hmm. over Nepal, all over different countries of the world, right? We have Minecraft servers, this, this Discord servers where we share memes, share our music, share our videos, you know, and it connects all of our Nepalese people from all around the world, not just Nepal. You know, we have people from America, from Denmark, from everywhere. And we all come together in this platform to just communicate with each other and talk, right? This Discord's already been running with over 4,500 members. So how, how do you think we can, you know, overcome this language barrier among young people? Language barrier, you know, we've we got to have more young second generations involved have cultural programs, you know, school after school events or school holiday programs that can influence, that can have great impact in their lives mm -hmm. and show them what our Nepalese culture, our language, our food is like, you know, mm -hmm. show them a traditional way. That is a great example. Of course, yes, we need to, you know, we need to try to reflect in our culture here better, in a better way so that we could represent uh, you know ourselves better as Nepalese even even if we are here in Australia right yes so concluding our conversation what would you like to say to all the voters and all the Nepalese diaspora here in Australia well I'd like to thank each and every one of you for and especially you Anissa and Everest team for giving me a platform where I can come and speak my mind freely Right. I would like to thank everyone there. And I would like to thank all the Nepalese people that are going to vote on 31st of July to you know, really think about who you're going to vote and who you're going to elect into our teams because this is going to be our future. Right, For the next two years, make sure you're putting on someone that can do the work, that can actually say what they do. You know, This is, not, this is actually a serious topic and a sensitive one. So everyone who's voting on 31st July, vote online. You know, you don't have to vote for me. You can vote for other youth members, but make sure whoever you are voting for, you know, they are reliable. You know, you trust them. That's the main point. On that note, I would like to end tonight's uh, special episode. And we will be back with more agendas and discussions from various candidates. Uh, in our NRA election special episode. Also, I'll be back with the second season of the Influence Academy with myself, Anusha, very soon. So until then, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you for watching Everest TV.